In today's video, we are going to learn how to consume data from a web API in a Xamarin Forms application. I have an existing web API created in a past tutorial. If you missed it, you can go check the video. This API runs on my computer. It exposes HTTP endpoint for performing basic CRUD operations on a book library. The goal of this tutorial is to allow a Xamarin Forms application to interact with the API. My name is Pat. If you are new here, consider subscribing because it motivates me to make more videos. Let's get into it. To save time, I have already created a Xamarin Forms application. The application targets only the Android platform. The application has a main page that displays a list of books. If I swipe from right to the left, I can see a button that allows me to delete a book. If I click on a book, a detail page shows up. This view allows me to update a book. From the main page, I can also navigate to a page that allows me to add a new book. So far, the application consumes in-memory data from a service called in-memory book service. The service implements an interface called iBook service. The application is set with dependency injection that will make it easy to replace the current iBook service implementation with a new one that gets data from a web API. Before writing the new implementation, we need to set a few things up. In the web API, I'm going to disable HTTPS. I don't want to deal with certificates in my development environment. In the startup.cs file, in the configure method, let's comment out this line, app.useHttpS redirection. Let's also edit the launch settings.json file. In the application URL, we remove the URL that contains HTTPS. We also set the SSL port to zero. Let's check if we can access the API from the emulator. We start a web view instance. In an Android emulator, we can't use localhost, but instead we can use the following address, 10.0.2.2, which is an alias to the host loopback interface. We should see the Swagger page, but no, we have a bad request instead. To fix the error, we need to update the web API local configuration. In the root project, there is a folder called VS. If you don't see it, make sure to enable viewing hidden files in your Windows Explorer. Inside the VS folder, there is another folder called book API. Inside this one, there is a file name applicationhost.config. Let's edit this file. In the section name site, there is a section dedicated to the web API. As you can see, there is a binding to the localhost address. We need to add another binding for the loopback interface. Let's do that. Now we can restart the API. In the emulator, if we try to reach the API again, this time you can see the Swagger documentation. Now let's create a new implementation of the iBook service. In the service folder, let's create a new class. We name it API Book Service. The class implements the iBook service. We need to make a request to the web API. In .NET, we use the HTTP client class for that matter. Let's declare it in the constructor. The HTTP client will be injected. In the startup class, let's change the registration of the interface iBook service. We are going to use the extension method add HTTP client. This extension allows registering a service that depends on the HTTP client. When the iBook service will be reserved, 
an instance of the HTTP client will be injected into the concrete implementation. Let's also set the base address of the API and the default content type. Let's implement the get books. This method will call the get endpoints on the web API. We use the get async method on the HTTP client. We pass the relative address of the endpoint. We don't have to specify the full URL because we set the base address already. The response field holds the response of the request. We invoke the ensure success status code to make sure we have a 200 HTTP status, which indicates that the request succeeds. Otherwise, an exception will be thrown. We read the data as a string on the content property of the response. We serialize it to an I enumerable of book. Let's test in the emulator. You can see the list of books. Let's check in the API. You can see we get the same result. Now let's implement getting a single book by ID. We invoke get async on the HTTP client object. You can see in the definition of the service that the URL has a segment that contains the ID. The URL is a combination of book and the ID. We ensure that the response is okay. We serialize the response into a book object. Let's run the app. If I select a book, a call is made to the endpoint and a single book is displayed. Now let's implement adding a new book. We invoke the post async method on the HTTP client. The URL is books. Post async method takes a second parameter, which is the payload of the request. We are going to use the string content object. It allows to post a book object as a string. We are going to transform the book object into a string thanks to the serialize method on the JSON serializer object. We also need to set the encoding and the content type. We ensure the request is okay. I don't expect any result here, so let's run the app. We add a new book. If I hit the save button, the request is sent to the API. And when I return to the main page, I can see the new book. Let's check in the API if the book has been headed. Yes, you can see it here. Let's implement the update of a book. An update is done by submitting a book as a payload and the ID of the book as a parameter in the URL. We invoke the put async method on the HTTP client object. We set the URL with the ID parameter. We serialize the book object and wrap it inside a string content. This is the payload of the request. We ensure the request succeed. Let's test in the emulator. If I change the title of the book and I save it, the title has changed. Let's verify in the API. If I execute the get books endpoint, you can see that the book title has changed. Let's implement the deletion of a book. We need to make the request to the book's URL and put the ID of the book as a parameter. We invoke the delete async method on the HTTP client object. We 
We ensure that the request succeeds. And if we check the emulator, if I swap from right to left, I hit the delete button, the book is deleted. Let's check in the API. If I get all the books, the book is not in the result. That means it's been deleted correctly. That's it for this tutorial. You can find the source code in the description below. If you like the video, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.